if you are. All right, cool. Here we go. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Black Altus Podcast. I'm your host, Rod. Join as always by my co-host, Karen. We're live on a Monday, um, the Monday that everybody had off at the New Year's. Um, just, you know, ready to do some podcasts and find us everywhere you get podcasts. Leave us five-star reviews. We love those. We read those on our feedback show, and it makes us feel all warm inside. Uh, it does. Official weapon of the show is? The taser. An unofficial sport. Bullet ball. And bullet ball extreme. Um, and uh, I guess we can go ahead and kind of get into the show. I'm trying to think. I didn't have much happening today, I think. Oh, uh, well, I did have a little bit of stuff. I, I went to CVS, I transferred my prescriptions and stuff over up, up the street. And so I walked to CVS and it was, it was funny because I tweaked my hip doing something because I'm just old. And I don't even remember what it was. Maybe it was shooting. Who knows? It, it'd be the most mundane shit. You'd be like, oh, I'm out of alignment. <laughs> Something hurt. Yeah, like I think I could have slept wrong. It could right. you know, obviously the mattress here isn't as comfortable as a home mattress. Um, I'm walking more. I'm going up and down stairs. Uh, we got a basketball hoop in our office that I shoot on. I really legit. And then, I, of course, like I tripped the other day. Like I legitimately do not know what happened, but it's just like my hip was hurting a little bit and or just an area around my hip and um so it's been making a little bit of a struggle to get around to go lateral so at any rate i was like uh you know what i'm feeling a little bit better not all the way there but um and i haven't gotten out the house since you know we had uh new year's or whatever i just stayed in i was like oh let me just take a quick little walk you know get my meds and stuff and so i did that and um i found a basketball court um that's outdoors i found a couple of them actually um and so now i might have to get you to send me my basketball shorts and my shoes uh and i had to buy a basketball like an outdoor basketball so that i might could shoot around every once in a while so that'll be cool okay i can I can do that. Uh, uh, you might want to YouTube stretches and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, nothing funny. YouTube, YouTube stretches. Uh, I know how to stretch. It's, uh, but I mean, yeah, I'm but not, specifically, I'm not going out here. there. I'm not going out there right now, anyway. Like, it, it take a while for the stuff to get here, anyway. But I'm not going to just run out there. I'm not stupid. <laughs> like, my hip hurts. Um, like, I'm not like I ain't no ain't no extra credit for going out there and playing hurt, you know. It's, and uh, you know, on top of that, I still have to get to work every day and stuff. And right. I don't want to take a uh, Uber to work. I want to um, walk it. So you know, I de- I've, I've been stretching and stuff and uh, and taking it easy. I, I'm not gonna rush out there, but I'm just saying, I at some point, you know, I would like to shoot around. So okay. Um. And then when I went there to the to the CVS, I bought a journal because I think I'm gonna start journaling this year. I'm not okay. I'm not sure. I probably should have just bought an app or something on my phone. There's probably something already on there for journaling, but I didn't think of it till I. You no know, problem. But it's nothing. Money. And and as wild as this may sound, everything is technology and things like that, which I completely understand. But uh, they've actually done studies and things for like certain type of writing. They say when you actually physically like it's something about the pen or the pencil to the paper mm-hmm. that in under certain situations help you actually remember better than like electronic typing and stuff like that. So, you know, uh, and, and, you know, we're the generation of writers, you know, after us, people go fuck a typewriter, fuck a computer. Everything is like, I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. uh, computerized, but we are still of the generation of, they actually writes yeah there's something about a tactile journal that i think works and i'm just gonna try to write something in it like every day even if it's something short or just something you know small but uh you know just embracing my inner white woman of color and uh i Long. think i'm gonna do that exercise at least today um, was a smooth 30 degrees outside yeah well, was not i'm like <laughs> I, like I don't think I'm gonna do a diary. Crisp, <laughs> crisp of crisp of air as I breathe. I saw the frost from my breath as I, I walked that side this morning with this. my Uggs and my Lululemons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm gonna write like 
that kind of like it's not i'm not gonna use it as a diary but just you know more of a journal and to remind myself of stuff and whatnot so we'll see how it works i don't know what exactly it's gonna be because i've never had a journal before and i know there's exercises some people have in like special journals and stuff but this one's just blank so it's not like you know 10 things that make you feel good about yourself like it's not like that it's just blank pages and i gotta fill them up and we'll see how it goes um and then i was trying to think there was something else oh and then i've been playing this new mobile game marvel snap it's uh free to download and mostly like free to play there's no ads that like break everything up or anything um but it's a card game Mm. and it's got all the marvel characters on it and you're basically just playing a card game of like this is this character's ability and then there's like three different little areas in each round in each match where you can uh play your six cards and the way you line up the abilities and add up the points determines on how you win and stuff and uh I've been, this is a really fun game. It's very addictive. I've been playing it uh, for a couple of days now and leveling up. And um, it's very easy to play as far as like, once you figure out what you're doing, like it's not like a skill game of like, you know, you got to be this fast. You got to move over here. You got to do that. Um, it's just mostly trying to understand the rules and what your characters can do mm-hmm. and like, you know, how they affect each other, you know, where like, this character adds two points to other characters around them, or this character can destroy the cards on the other people's team. And uh, yeah, man, it's actually really fun. And I've I've been knee deep in that for like the the last 48 hours. I'm glad you have. I just been uh, chilling, watching Netflix. Uh, I started, I finally started watching the Spy, when you've been suggesting. Spy Family? Spy Family. Yeah, Uh, Crunchyroll. Yes, it's actually I haven't got that deep in it, but that's just really funny. I was watching a uh, Kuroko uh, Kuroko's Kuro- basketball. No, it's 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 C O T O R A something like that. Kuroko lives alone. It is about this oh, little boy. Kotaro. I think it's Kotaro, but yeah, go Kotaro ahead. Kotaro lives alone, and that shit is it is the most fucking adorable thing about this little baby who li- the baby like four years old and he's literally living alone <laughs> and uh he like by himself and so it goes to like his story and shit like that and and it's sad but also it's one of those things where um uh he's very mature for his age and like he's literally helping everybody around him and i i don't know if it's going to get a season two or not but i really do hope it gets a season two. Oh, you watched it- the whole season because because it, it was really cute and adorable and for you know you just flew through it because like okay. you know because it was so so uh cute and adorable and so i kind of just flew through that in the past like mm, two days i think i started yesterday i finished uh earlier today okay um that sounds cool so- i've been watching jack ryan on amazon the latest season because i love impossible white man how was that uh, um, I like it. I, I've seen people say they don't like it um, or it's not as good as the first two seasons, but I don't know. Maybe people just have fond memories of the first two seasons because I thought the first two seasons was just as ridiculous as this shit, like going to <laughs> other countries and disrupting their motherfucking um, regime, they foreign regimes and, and fucking just, uh, what is it called? Uh uh, I forget what the word is, but like, well, we just go out there and decide we America, we decide who the good guys or bad guys are. We just start killing people. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. I'm, I mean, we just doing that in like with Russia now. <laughs> like, I don't like I don't know the people that don't like it. I'm like, I'm not. Well, y'all, what, what were y'all ever liking about the first two seasons? Because this seemed like the same dumb, impossible white man, you know, he's yeah, he's, gone, he's gone rogue and he's doing a Jack Bauer where it's like everyone on the in the government is against him but he's the only one that's right and he the only one that knows how to what the picture is and the big picture and all i'm like this is just standard impossible white man fair I, what what's the problem all right and, and so i completely understand like i said i haven't seen any of that but yeah i know that's a very uh popular one and i always hear about that when it comes down and i'm like you i already haven't been anywhere doing anything i think the most i got out was uh saturday when me and your mom went to the gang it's cold freeze and shit i've been just staying in the house yeah. and so um today i actually got uh your oil changed in the car um inspected 
Mm-hmm. Um, I was gonna get it done earlier this week, but um, what was it was it Friday or Saturday? I think Saturday. But half the places was closed, you know, observing New Year's Day. And then, you know, I went to our place up the street and, you know, they was like, you know, because we normally drop it off. So I don't care about the time. But that man, he was like, yeah, it'll be here all day. You know, it'll be like seven, eight hours. I look like, mm-mm, no, yeah, I won't everybody, be leaving. Everybody had the day off. So that would be when they get try to get their most work done. So, yeah, you know, it's going to be slam banged up in there. Yes, yeah, so I was like, mm, no, thank you. Because I thought about just dropping it off and Ubering my ass back home. <laughs> I was like, well, fuck it. Y'all can just keep it all day. But I decided, I decided, you know, I'm not going to do that. So I was like, well, I knew nothing was going to be open up yesterday. So I decided to go out today. Uh, I had talked to your mama for a little bit uh, on the phone with her. So as I got the phone with her, I was like, you know what? Let me go on up here to the 15-minute place. Because, you know, the 50, mm-hmm. I, 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 like, I like the 15-minute place. I know they charge more. But bitch, it's 15 minutes. Ain't nobody got no time for you to hold on to my car. Goddamn day, I got shit to do. So I pay more for to for, for, for me to sit in the car when you change my oil. And a lot of these places uh uh do both. And I, I I I found one place, but they was like, we only do oil changes, we don't do inspections. And the dude was like, Well, I'm certified, and he was like, But they won't do it. So I was like, Well, no, you, I'm not wasting my time here because I want a two for one. I don't want to have to come back and get this shit done again. We 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 need to uh, combo this shit up. Yeah. And so um I went to the to the uh uh the plate the uh, fifteen minute place we go to and I, I really like that place and they got it done and it just so happened I guess everybody must have got that got that shit done um Saturday because uh it, it didn't it, it didn't take them that long yeah yeah it, yeah it was empty you yeah. know like it was a few cars in there and you know some people was waiting but I didn't have to wait like for a long like not as long as I thought I was gonna wait you know maybe an hour if an hour you know somewhere mm-hmm. in there. And then after that, um, I decided I wanted to just uh, poke around. So I just uh, drove around a little bit. I got the car washed, you know, little things like that. Because I really yeah. hadn't been, like, getting out the house. So I said, this would be a perfect time for me just to just to do some of the things I used to do. I've always been like this. I know a lot of people not like this. Sometimes I get in the car and just drive with no goddamn destination. Sometimes I'm like, I just need to get the house. Let me just go forward. And wherever I, wherever the car takes me, that's where I go. I get tired. I just turn around and bring my black ass back home. So that's what I did. I just got yeah. out and got got some miles on your car and stuff like that. No problem. Yeah, I, I had sat in the uh, park for a while because uh, when I went, when I found the basketball court, I actually like recorded the me going into the basketball court and I recorded uh, me. Uh, I then I just sat there for a while and like kind of took it in and was like, yeah, I think I can play basketball here. So. Uh, yeah, it's just getting out that, you know, you get stuck in here and shit. So it's like, you want to get out and see some stuff and, uh, yeah, I don't blame you at all. I'll pay for the, uh, obviously the, uh, taxes and stuff on the car and then mm-hmm. you should get the sticker and stuff soon. Uh, I think I have to wait 24 hours or something. So I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll get the car stuff taken okay, care yeah, of. Yeah. Yeah. After that. Cause, uh, uh, I wanted to be sure everything was, you know, taken care of as soon as possible because you know us i don't want no problems i want nobody talking about something done expired or some other bullshit nope no no reason to pull my black ass over so mm-hmm. i'm like we pay that shit as soon as it comes because i you know i have we have to be blessed when we got the money and i was like i don't want no bullshit <laughs> yeah and i was also kind of busy today because uh i w- went to the cabin with my parents and you know the cabin where my grandma used to live but she she passed and my mama was sad so i went and got the uh she needed some apples so she could make some some apple crumbles so i had to go fight some wasps with a wooden store that my dad gave me and uh killed the wasp and then got the apples and then uh tried to go to sleep that night but i seen like some ghost or some shit and uh the ghost made me freak out and so i woke up and i had a spirit animal that i was bonded with and so now we trying to go find my grandmama ghost her uh ring in the woods so <laughs> you know it was a big it was a big afternoon for me so it was a lot going on <laughs> the hell is wrong with you what you i mean you you know you i thought you i thought you was into this i i <laughs> <laughs> I am into this. It's just ridiculous when you read when you say it out loud. Well, um, it's a it's a game called Ariata Area Arietta of Spirits, and uh, mm-hmm. I, 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 you told me about it, and so I started playing it because uh, it yeah, it's fun. It kind of remind me a little bit of Zelda and stuff uh, so mm-hmm. far. 
Uh, but I'm enjoying it. How far you into the game? I just told you, Karen. I'm going to get my grandma's ring, so that's exactly where I'm at. I told you what my afternoon was. So okay, yeah. my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Okay, okay. So you're out here, here fighting these these way these trail spirits. <laughs> you go. You're going to get your grandmama's ring, uh, and it's some more after you after your grandmama's ring. And so, oh, I'm uh, sure it is. It's early in the game, so mm -hmm. it's actually it's actually a really really cute, adorable, and uh, fun uh, fun game. So I'm I'm glad you uh, enjoying that. Uh, like I said, I just been watching Netflix. I'm probably gonna play some more uh uh beer and breakfast game mm. uh, that's my jam i've really been uh, uh liking that it's is it uh for those who don't know it's a video game about a about a, a you a bear and you uh do a bed and breakfast and so that you know i like little cute platformy games like that so that's my jam all right let's get into some news <laughs> Just like all those other professional podcasts, we do banter now. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, all right, new stuff. I guess, you know, uh, um, we'll skip coronavirus for the day. Not that nothing's happening, but just, you know, we haven't had as many much time to collect new stories. Right. Um, a couple was trapped for hours high above the ground at an amusement park. This happened in uh, Hirata, uh, Hirakata, Osaka Prefecture. A, Is something malfunction, I'm assuming? Well, we're going to get there, you know. I'm, I was going to read and tell you. A young couple were left stranded for hours, 50 meters above the ground in freezing temperatures at an amusement park here after a ride malfunction. Officials said the giant drop Meteo Freefall attraction suddenly stopped near the top of the ride at 7 p.m. on December 30th, leaving the couple in their 20s strapped in their seats. They were eventually rescued about four hours later, rushed to a hospital because they showed signs of hyperthermia. Oh. They, they weren't injured, but they complained about feeling unwell. Um, the attraction takes the passengers to a high, height of 50 meters before making a sudden drop. Temperatures on the evening of December 30th were close to zero. <gasps> Bitch, what was you out there in the first place? Now, I imagine that's zero Celsius, but what is zero? I guess, I guess what is zero Celsius in Fahrenheit? I, I, I don't know, but I know, like, you know, we got a little amusement park here, and, and them bitches be like, hey, if the temperature get below so and so, like, they won't even roll certain rides. It's like, we just ain't rolling them bitches. Oh, yeah. So Celsius is zero is freezing. So it must have been 32 degrees or so. It must have been freezing. Oh, Water freezing. yeah, that's why crazy. Why was the shit even operating? Um, yeah, the th I mean, it was operating because they thought it was going to work. I mean, you only supposed to be up there for a couple of minutes and then, it's, you know, you shouldn't freeze to death. I mean, um, but, but, uh, and I guess my, and I, and I don't I, like I said, and I guess because here they be like, we're not running the shit if it get under. So I'm like, well, well, obviously, so, it wait, might is be that true. Is that true? Carowinds, yeah, Carowinds. So if, if, if it gets cold, Carowinds will not run the rides. Not all the rides, certain rides, like particularly the rides that go up in there. Because when we went to us, uh, 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 the Winterfest, mm -hmm. it was certain roller coaster shit. They just didn't run because they okay. said the temperature was too cold. Oh, I didn't know that. Learn mm -hmm. something. New. Um, local fire departments rescue received an emergency phone call. Sorry, this mic. Oh, that's why it's not, it's turned the wrong way. Okay. Um, received an emergency phone call around 9 p.m. According to Her Heracata Park officials, the three set sets of seats stopped near the top of the ride around 7 p.m. So wait, they didn't get an emergency phone call till 9? Uh, while the two sit sets were lowered manually, the third set containing the couple did not budge. The longest ladder used by the local fire department only reaches a height of 42 meters. So a ladder truck to rescue the couple was out of the question. Rescuers eventually managed to reach the pair by lowering the seats manually. According to the J Japan Meteorological Agency, the temperature in Harakata at 10 p.m. was was December 30th was three degrees. Uh, park officials apologized to the couple. Um, so 
yeah, I, I mean, I guess you got a lawsuit on your hands. I don't know how it works out, so, you know, if they're as litigious as us, but I feel like somebody going to get sued. I know here in the States, they'd be like, no, bitch, you, you need to shut this bitch down if you, you know it ain't going to run. The name Karen is dying out as women are deciding to legally change their names to escape negative connotations. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Particularly a lot of white women. I could I could see that. Yeah, I could see Karen falling off of like baby list and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because these white women went out there with these Karen haircuts and stuff, acting a motherfucking fool. And now was quote unquote considered a slur. So for you know, so for a lot of them, you know, not just funny, they're being picked on and shit like that. A lot of them can't handle that. You know, not just funny, I'm black. So I'm like, well, that shit don't apply to me. And so um I'm like, I'm not out here you know, acting a fool. I wish they would act like they had some sense to, you know, so that Karen's name, uh, the name quote unquote of Karen wouldn't have such a bad uh, stigma to it. But at the same time, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, anytime I object or say something, even if it's valid, all of a sudden I'm a fucking Karen when you go, well, bitch, no, like that shit is stupid. Yeah. Um, this year, only one baby was named Karen in the entirety of the United Kingdom. That's shocking. Everybody ran away from that name. Mm -hmm. One baby in the whole UK? What the fuck? There's no... What? How is that possible? It, like I said, it has such a bad stigma to it. Like, everybody's online and everybody seeing these things and it's, it, the, the name has such a a negative attachment to it to people that are like nope I like and like you say it's white people they're like nope I'm not naming my kid Karen because <laughs> I don't even want them to grow up with this stigma even though by the time your child get old enough nobody's gonna give a fuck and it's gonna be something else but people are just running away from it is this what happened to like Gertrude or like in 1975 somebody is like you rocking like a real Gertrude today and then there was everybody's like we done with Gert Gert Gertrude say ain't no more of them being born um, now, according to this, the source is baby, a popular site called Baby Center. And I'm not sure how accurate this, this site can be because they said in 2021 they only had four registrations. And then in 2022, they had one. Um, and they said the term, the name Donald has fallen out of favor, uh, probably because of Donald Trump, I guess. I can see that. I, I don't know, man. This is. I'm I'm down in the accuracy of this source. Yeah, I know it went down, but I was like, it got to be more than one. I'm with you though. I, I'm with you though. I'm I'm pretty sure the percentage dropped. Now I'm not even gonna lie about that. Probably dropped here in the states too. I guess you're the last Karen OG over here. I, I guess so. You standing strong. You do. You. I do. I love my name. I wouldn't. I would. A little. I wouldn't change it for nothing. I actually really do love my name. Last of a dying breed. Did you do you even know what Karen means and where it comes from? Mm -mm. So apparently the name Karen uh is from uh Greek, a Greek word that means pure, with nearly two percent of baby girls being born with that name in the mid-1950s. However, of course, the name has taken on different meanings mm -hmm. <laughs> since, since the last three or four years. Um, I don't know. I just think that's interesting that if that's if that is at all true. I, I I'm still doubtful of that source, but yeah, I'm still uh, doubtful for that source. I'm still um upset when we went to Eminem store and they didn't have Karen on none of the mugs that I wanted to throw them twenty five dollars at. They I was like, bitch, that's such a fucking common ass name. I was like, have they tarnished the name that bad that y'all won't put K R E N K R Y N? They was just like, no, we and I guarantee you, Karen was up there. They just took them bitches off. I didn't know if they was like people buying this as a joke. I don't know, but I was highly upset because I want my twenty five dollar pointless mug from the M M store. I'm sorry. <laughs> that would no, nah, that does that would check out. I mean, we it was it, it was crazy that we couldn't find a Karen mug and. I don't know. Maybe maybe the signs are all around us that you just can't. It's not out here. Okay, um, not. Supreme Court blocks Biden administration from now for now from ending the migrant expulsions under Title 42. Title 42 is the rule that said that the Trump administration used while they denied the pandemic's effects in every other avenue of life. The one place they didn't deny it was uh, letting migrants into the country. Uh, 
and letting people uh, come in is a health risk to everybody. They may bring COVID with them from the people that don't believe in masks, don't believe in the vaccine, don't believe in anything else now. Right. But this is, I was saying, and, this is where you believe it. And this is the limits of power that, you know, this is one of the reasons when people just do the fix it Joe Biden shit. I'm always like, slow your motherfucking roll because some of this shit is getting, ca- is going to get challenged in court. And yeah. I just don't need you fucking flakes to run away scared because the, 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 the hammer and the cudgel that you want the administration to have doesn't work that way. Right. Um, and but this partisan ass Supreme Court that we have right now, um, they are just they are completely um, they are completely ruling by power. Like they, it's not yes. about any logical Look, consistency from one rule to the next. Not about um, president, any of that shit. Like none of that shit matters. They'll make shit up just so they can get shit to to go their way. It's fucked up. So for this one, um there was a lawsuit there's so while the original way it was put in place was through the trump administration of course biden is now president his administration says hey we should stop doing this we should let we just need to start the wheels of immigration again and i know you know there's a bunch of super liberal people that you know are always shitting on you know democrats for immigration stuff which i'm always kind of like that shit sounds great until you realize it's not going to be an open border. So there's going to be no. a process in place. Correct. And what, what Democrats believe in is there should be a process in place. What Republicans believe in is nobody that's not white should be allowed in the country. Correct. And what the super liberal people pretend to believe in is Ali Ali Oxa free open the borders. Everybody can come in. Um, and so you you're gonna find some kind of middle ground here, but we can't even find a middle ground because the Biden administration is saying, "Hey, let the people come in. Let's let's start this. We should be the ones setting the immigration policy. We won the fucking election." And the Supreme Court is like, "Nah, mm-mm. we don't, we don't yeah. want to, just because we don't believe in it, and because there's 19 states where Republicans filed like this lawsuit." Um, saying it's going to be a, a, a national catastrophe if we let immigration start. Same motherfuckers, by the way, putting people on planes and buses to put them in front of Kamala Harris's house and shit. So, like, they think it's a game playing with people's lives and shit, and they're not at all concerned or worried in the ways that they claim to be in the first fucking place. But, yeah, it's, it, 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 the Supreme Court is just completely doing this bullshit. Right, and the same people... It was about a year or two ago, we kept seeing these sad-ass white farmers crying because all the apples was dying and all the squash was dying and all this live fruit was just dying and Americans are lazy and they don't want these motherfucking... Bitch, I'm not working out there and that fucking heat and them them, them ridiculous-ass uh, conditions for fucking 5.45 an hour. Fuck you, bitch. No. Like, like them same people, them, like they blocking immigration, like, like, like this is their workforce. Like these, these are the people that would go, 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 go out there and work this shit. Yeah. And it's not just those jobs, by the way, it's there's corporations and companies that hire people uh, that they know are immigrating into the country because they know they'll work hard and they know they don't have to pay them as much. Like, and, and it's just crazy because the people that get blamed are the people that immigrate to America. It's never the companies that get blamed. It's, you have GOP people out of one side of their mouth talking about how much they hate these black and brown people coming into the country. And at the other side of their mouth, here they go trying to fill up their warehouses and, and stock rooms and all this shit with, with that type of labor. So, yeah, it, it is extremely hypocritical, but um, mostly I'm like before we even get to those people, I'm just mostly pissed because it's this blatant Supreme Court that is just only ruling through power. They they have taken off the facade of needing logic to to do what they want to do. They just do what conservative people say to do, and it and logic be damned from one judgment to the motherfucking next. Uh, yeah, Alabama, Alabama. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No problem. It just doesn't make sense how they rule. Alabama airport baggage handler killed after being sucked into the plane's engine. Well, goddamn, how did that happen? 
Yeah, uh, the tragedy shut down the airport for several hours for the Federal Aviation Administration and National Transportation Safety Board to investigate the incident. Uh, there are a few details at the moment. The airport did not report did report that a Piedmont Airlines uh, subsidiary of subsidiary of American Airlines ground crew employee died after an industrial accident. Um, the tragic accident happened around uh, three o'clock on Saturday, December thirty first. And it was scheduled to depart Montgomery to Dallas Fort Worth. The flight was understandably canceled and the airport reopened Saturday evening uh, around t- like 830. Man. That's crazy. You know what? This you know who need to hop on this is um that one airline that kept getting all their shit canceled and be like, hey, but at least we're not sucking people in the plane engines, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. Maybe, your flight maybe, might get canceled, but it ain't gonna get canceled because because it got body parts in it. We ain't had to shut down the whole airport. We just shut down our flights, and you know what I'm saying, y'all. That like they ain't got nothing to do with us. How come y'all ain't put them on the news? Like, <laughs> they like all the people that's like, what about Brett Favre when a black man fuck up? You know, and, and it's one of them things where they be out there around the planes whirling and shit twirling all the time. I'm so su- I'm surprised they don't have weights or some shit so that so that more people don't fly into them bitches. Oh, I have no idea how this can happen. Like I literally don't don't know that. I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of investigations because mm-hmm. I, I, I shit. If I was working airport baggage, I'd be like, that can happen, right? What the fuck? That's a like. <laughs> Y'all ain't got no harnesses in this bitch. Y'all, y'all can't tie me to the to, to, to the plane. I mean, tie me to the ground. I mean, bitch, what? That's a scary ass way to die, dog. Like, I'm sure that right. shit ain't. Is that shit in the first day of the training manual? Like, I guarantee you, they probably have something to say. You're supposed to be so many feet away. Like, like I guarantee you, it's something to that. You know, shit. Because you know, if everybody was out here willy nilly, we would have more ground people. You know, flying through there. Mm mm mm. Um, let's see what else is happening. Um, don't care about this. Don't care about this. Oh, Governor Kate Brown commutes sentences of all 17 people on Oregon on Oregon's death row. Um, she uh Tuesday said she would commute the sentences of all 17 individuals on Oregon's death row to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The latest in her end of term string of clemency decisions. I have long believed that justice is not advanced by taking a life. The state should not be in the business of executing people, even if it's a terrible crime, place them in prison. Brown said in a statement, said on the press release, this is a value to many Oregon going to Oregon is here. The governor also directed the Department of Corrections to dismantle the state's death chamber. Oregon has not executed anyone on death war row for a quarter century. And Brown continued the moratorium that Governor John Kitzhaber placed uh, in 2011. Governor-elect Tina Kotek, who, like Brown and Kitzhaber, is a Democrat, is personally opposed to the death penalty based on her religious beliefs and said during the campaign that she would continue the moratorium. Um, Voters have gone back and forth over the death penalty over the years, abolishing and then reinstating it repeatedly. Voters' most recently decision on the death penalty was 1984 when they inserted it into the state constitution. Oregon is one of 27 states to authorize the death penalty, according to the National Conference of State Legislatures. Um, yeah, what I think is interesting is if it wasn't being used for 25 years anyway, then it it was mostly like a, this is a bad, bad, bad crime penalty. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's how, mm-hmm. that's how it was used in most states. Mm-hmm. And unless you have one of these Republicans, this a dick that's like, you know what? We're going to reinstate it, crank it back up, which is rare, quote unquote. But you do have some people that just be like, put the death penalty back on. They just start killing people. Well, right. I mean, I'm conflicted because if the people voted for the shit to be in the Constitution, I feel like that's what the people in that state want. And if they vote Democrat and the Democrat runs on, I'm not executing nobody and I'm not going to let nobody get executed, then that feels like what the people want too. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Like it feels like a little bit of a conflict of interest where it's like mm-hmm. when they but get you a said chance it was to vote. 1984 when they voted. Like that's a long time. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things where like if you have to continually have people vote on it, but then it's clearly because y'all don't want to do it. 
You know what I mean? Right. Like, oh, you know, we should vote on it again. You know, it's like vote on it again. Let's just kill some people. I mean, let's 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 vote one more time. Let's vote one more time. See what y'all say. Um, but uh, yeah, I do think that's interesting, and it definitely matters who you put in the office because uh, mm -hmm. the people in those positions are the ones that decide. It's also interesting that they always have to wait to the end of their term to do these clemency things. Of course, it's they like can't so do it while they're running. It's so deep, not just while they're running, but while they're governing. Like she's not running. Well, I mean, that's what I meant. You know, yeah. we are at the end of the term. Like, we well, you know what, though? You know what? I actually take it back. I think what you said was right. Um, Because when you are a politician, you're always running. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, even when you're governing, you're like, is this going to hurt me in the next midterms? Is this going right. to hurt me in the next? Yeah. So, yeah. It's, I mean, I do find it interesting. Um, I'm sure if you talk to the, some of the families of these victims of these crimes or what, you're probably going to get a different response. Mm -hmm. They might yeah, feel like differently. This. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I and I completely understand that. The, you know, the thing was like, hey, hey, we ain't gonna never let them out. Like, trust they will not get out of this bitch. Yeah. So mm, it's just it's very. But there's some people you just have to be like, you know what? We just can't let you out. We ain't gonna fry you, <laughs> or, 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 or or do the the chair or anything like that. But what you ain't gonna see is your freedom. Oh, I did forget to mention, uh, I bought a wool blanket to go over this radiator, and it seems to be helping somewhat. Oh, um, shit down. I don't you know. How, one that don't catch on fire? Right. One that won't catch on fire. I had to look up, like, flame retardant wool blanket, you know, like the military style. Um, they say, I mean, they say any wool blanket would do it, but just, you know, some of this shit is, like, different blends of fabric and you can't be sure so i just wanted to get one and i'll be 100 percent sure and uh i feel like it's doing this thing so far so um good let's go to another article um how about um a 19 year old was busted in bogus parking ticket in santa cruz uh i think they should have said in bogus parking ticket scam but um okay so a 19 year old man designed fake parking tickets and then he put them on cars at a beach in santa cruz in hopes of collecting real payments he put false citations which included a qr code linking potential victims to a website to pay a fine on the cars late wednesday night investigators do not know how many fake tickets the man put on cars or how many victims may have paid the bogus fines police took the man into custody thursday afternoon on suspicion of unlawful use of computer system and attempted fraud he did not receive any payments the coastal city of santa cruz is about 55 miles south of san francisco yes, so, go to the fucking jail go go to the jail go get, to the goddamn the death jail. Penalty. we take it back get the death penalty i want to vote now <laughs> vote right now yeah, yeah that, that's like that's so fucked up because it's like you know a lot of people like me but like oh shit i got a ticket let me pay this i don't want them taking my license like you know you know a lot of law-abiding citizens just gonna go ahead and pay thinking this shit is legit yeah it's definitely like one of those evil smart things where it's just like damn that's ingenious and also particularly fucking cold-blooded <laughs> to do to people because you know people get, get panicked they get Oh no, I got a parking ticket. Oh God, what am I gonna do? And then this motherfucker's just collecting some uh <laughs> collecting your money. <laughs> so I guess when you get the shit, you have to wait a few days to to look up and be sure it's legit. Right. It's oh man, Leon the Leon Fire Department, that don't seem like it will, that's the right thing. Right. The Leon Jenkins <laughs> Fire Department or whatever. Oh man. What the fuck is this? Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get into some different news. Let's move into a different segment. Um, how about we do some uh, white people news? White people news. We'll bring it. Excelling to the barbecue. We might be problematic. We're little and different. It's so really harsh on our fragile faces. White people news. Oh, yes. What are the white people talking about? Uh, well, first of all, some very scary white people news for the Marvel Universe. Oh, shit. What uh, happened? Hawkeye, Jeremy Renner, got mm -hmm. air, he got airlifted to the hospital after a snowplow ran over his leg. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's, he's conscious and in stable condition and about to get surgery, but 
yeah um he he was airlifted out of a nevada town sunday morning at the snowplow ran over his leg in a freak accident um footage from tmz monday showed the helicopter taking off from a cleared road surrounded by tons of snow heading to a nearby hospital with marvel the marvel star inside clinging to life one of renter's neighbors told the outlet that the plow accidentally ran over one of his legs causing him to lose a tremendous amount of blood another neighbor who's his doctor managed to place a tourniquet on the star's leg until paramedics arrived to fly him to the hospital uh oh. yeah so they say his family's with him. He's receiving excellent care. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, oh, my God, that's scary as hell. Right? And it's funny, not funny, ironic funny, you know, because he was just posting about the snowplow on his, like, social media and people, like, posting pictures with it and everything, like, driving it. Um, like, this is a picture of him driving the snowplow. Um, this is a big ass thing to run over your leg, man. That's a um, that's a plow. So it's like a truck. Yeah, it's a snow plow. Yeah. Oh, like, like plow the in the snow. Okay, okay, I'm with you now. Yeah, like like the Simpsons, Mr. Plow. You know. Um, but yeah, it's it's like that's crazy, crazy news. I hope that dude gets well soon, or mm -hmm. what, you know, hope he's able to 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 you know, not even just work work as far as like being an Avengers or shit, but just but like just okay, have a, right? Yeah, have a good life, you know. Um, let's see. Um, GMA three anchors Amy Robach and TJ Holmes were spotted together amid ABC probe into their romance. Oh shit now. Yeah, they still out here on these problematic streets. And um they Living were my best life. They were seen getting cozy at an airport in Atlanta on Monday, nearly a month to the day after their romance surfaced. Um yeah, I was trying to find the actual picture, which I don't know why this article they went from not being seen together to fuck it. We ain't coming back. Yeah. Um let me see if I can find the actual picture. Why the hell did did they not post the picture to the article, but this picture was pretty sexy, you know. I gotta say, oh shit, no. like, it was it was like one of them pictures where like you just have to be like, damn, they in love, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the, here's a picture of them at the airport um together. Yeah, they literally can't go no, they couldn't go nowhere before. They really can't go nowhere now. Yeah, their body language is always like on ten, you know. Um, and I'll see if I can find like this Twitter thing that was so funny to me, but it was like a picture, uh, it was that the picture of them, obviously, but it was also like somebody, um, did like, uh, if Olivia Pope would have been working, <laughs> working their, their case or whatever and telling them what to say and how to act. And it was so good. It felt like Shonda <laughs> Rhimes wrote it cause it was just that good. Um, and it really feels like uh, it could be their like official cover story. It, it made me laugh so hard uh, when they did that. Because so, uh, because it does feel like they're leaning into it, and I feel like if you lean into it enough, people can't help but to kind of have to forgive. In five you. years from now, they're gonna be like, that's a great couple. Cause see, this is the, the the toxic secret that you never really hear anybody talk about, and you know, on Twitter people hate everything, so don't listen to Twitter. They're not real mm -hmm. life. It doesn't right. count. But um, if people longevity is the disinfectant of what we consider to be toxic get-togethers, right? So mm -hmm. like, no matter how fucked up we think people are to get together, unless there's like legitimate uh allegations of like maybe abuse or assault or some type right and sometimes even then to be honest mm -hmm. people still depending on the situation but unless there is a lot of times people go okay you know like a lot of time people mm -hmm. a lot of times people just like all right well shit they together and uh it's been long enough and um what am i say you know like they uh the, the date these two grown adults can't be together even when it's stuff like oh they got together at such a young age or some shit or look at this look at this age gap between this couple if they stay together long enough no, most right. people let the shit go they right they, yeah. you know and it's only on like social media that you truly get the like i'm gonna hold this against them forever but 
two consenting adults, most people go, yeah, he was, she was 23, he was 75, they've been together 20 years, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so this is the picture um, of them at the, at the beach or a pier or something hanging out together. And this is a month after the, like, there's no shame in their game. Mm-mm. They was like, it's out in the open now. And they done, they done them paperwork out. So they was like, we have nothing to hide. So this thread after this is so good. This is from Kenny's Royce, who says, it's, it's pictures of Olivia Pope. When you go out in public, you want the narrative to be that you love each other. When people see pictures of you two, they shouldn't be asking, why did he cheat on his wife? They should be saying, wow, this is what love looks like. This is what I want. <laughs> this is what I want. This That's <laughs> hilarious. And then this is her on the phone, I guess. Amy, the problem is you're a rich homewrecker. No one wants to root for the rich homewrecker. They want to root for the innocent blonde woman who fell in love at the wrong time. That we can work with. That story I can sell to the tabloids. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> is this is uh, her talking to uh, Quinn, who used to help her fix stuff. It's got the picture of TJ touching Amy's ass. Quinn, I need you to get them new clothes and get them on a flight for a vacation now. We need comfortable casual. Make them look like they're the couple you would go on a date night with. They need to be normal so people can receive them as normal and get rid of her boots. Ah, ah. Her boots. Those are her boots. Get rid of her boots. (laughs) It was hilarious. Listen, it was good. Like, Shonda need to hire her, okay? Um, But yeah, that's what the whites are talking about these days. Uh-huh. Um, Diddy, who P. I Diddy? P. Diddy, I'm gonna be honest, y'all. I'm gonna be honest, and maybe I lose my black card for this. I did not know anyone cared about Diddy's love life until until Black Twitter. Me either, and and I'm like, who? I'm like, I might lose my black heart for that because I honestly got I, mean, I know I, P. Diddy, but I don't know none of these women. I had never seen one conversation. I had never participated in any conversation, even when it was about Cassie or Kim. Uh his like it I, I it just never came up. It was it was I, I I've never met somebody that like wanted Diddy in that way. You know what I'm saying? It was like, ooh. Got to give me some Diddy, you know what I'm saying? Not, not that, not that I'm saying that nobody wants them, but just it had never come up. But Twitter, Black Twitter, this day jam, they love what who Puff Daddy yes. is me. And so he apparently just had a new baby with a woman, mm-hmm. but he's dating Young Miami from the City Girls, and I guess they're like publicly whatever. And then people were like, oh, he done cheated on her and had a baby on her. And, and people was talking shit like about her. But then she came out and was like, I understood and I know everything. And y'all need to mind y'all fucking business. It's cool with me. And I don't know anything about this other than that. And apparently it made the white people news because they went, Young, young Miami and Diddy went Instagram official today. Oh shit! Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't. I like I say, I know P Diddy. I don't know nobody else involved in any of the incidents. Like anybody, baby, 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 mama. I don't know none of them people. Yeah, oh, so you don't know the city girls? Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah, well, city girls. Pretty I, mean, I mean, I I've heard of the city girls, but you know, like like they outside my realm, and I don't think I've even played this. Knowing me, I've heard their music, but like that's my jam. But don't ask me who they are. You know me. I don't be paying attention. Not to talk out of turn, but this is our show, so I'm going to talk a little out of turn. I also need these motherfuckers to make up their mind on when it's okay for a grown-ass woman to make a decision in their love life without being, like, inf- infantilized because you don't like it and you don't want to blame her. Correct. Because, like, she's 28 and he's 53. And I've seen people go from the go the whole gambit of, like, Listen, and they did the same thing with Cassie or Casey, however you say her name. Mm-hmm. She is a grown woman. She want to date a man that got a lot of money, and that's their business, and y'all need to stop judging her. She ain't da-da-da-da. I said, cool, man. You're right. She grown. That's her business. 
the second she moved on, it was, ah, ha, ha, ha. she brought it. She, she got him a real man. Now, fuck did it. She, you know, like, and I was like, mm, I thought y'all said that was consensual and okay. Seems like you're harboring a lot of resentment towards yeah. him for not marrying her. But y'all said that if they, how do you even know that she's not the one that don't want to get married then, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool, whatever. Same thing happened with this young Miami thing. You know, um, where's it? Where like it's suddenly like this woman is not a woman anymore because you don't like Diddy and something must be happening to her. Maybe they're right, I don't know, but I don't think they know either. I think mm-hmm. it's all guesswork. Not just projecting. I think it really does uh pull the, the, the sheet off of everybody being fake, like you know, ho is life or Right, um, being, a, lot, a lot of people say that, but they don't mean that. Being fake, like you know, is listen. If you just want to be in a situation, ship, he a rich man, and you want to get mm-hmm. that bag, okay, like okay. But then the second something happens, it's immediately to the she was like basically an abuse victim, as far as they're concerned. Mm-hmm. And it may was, have been about that. It's nothing wrong with making that money, getting that bag, getting that life, and moving on to the next. And women ought to have the freedom to be able to do that. Yeah, it's like I said, it's just the way that people go back. Like I saw go back and forth. Okay, I'm with Keith Stanfield. Lakeith Stanfield. Mm -hmm. He has he just got engaged to a woman, but he has another woman that they have a child together. And she just posted like putting him on blast, saying, like, um, you know, he's been I'm I'm tired of being kept a secret as like his secret family. I, you know, uh secret, you know, whatever. And I'm exposing him, and she's 23. And I saw someone today saying, like, 23 and 30 is basically that's that's very uncomfortable. What's the age difference there? And I had to be like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Because if you it's the it's the same thing that happened with Cardi and Offset when he cheated or whatever, where it's like mm-hmm. y'all don't even know how to discuss things without terms of abuse. You Correct. can't just not like something, you got to take it to the <laughs> next level of level. Like, He's grooming a 23 year old woman and he's 30. Like, it's not some crazy, uh, like, this isn't some huge gap, even. It's, it's not like this is somebody in their 50s. Yeah. And I do wonder what that really does. What does that really mean when y'all, it's, it just makes me wonder what it really means when you support somebody at that age for certain decisions. But then the second you can make them a victim, you turn them into a victim rather than just a person that's either dealing with the consequences of the decision or just a person that like um caught a bad break or 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 possibly even don't even have a problem with it you decided you have a problem with it so now they should have a problem with it you know what i mean i i i, I know this might sound crazy but i think it boils down to and maybe i might be looking at this wrong but this is my perspective you have a lot of people particularly online that don't believe in accountability and yeah. so this flip flop and this going back and forth always pushes and always shed accountability because sometimes, yes, there are things where people are victims. Don't get me wrong. But then sometimes y'all just projecting because y'all don't want them to be held accountable and deal with the consequences of the repercussions of the actions that they chose to take. So you flip back and forth to whatever sounds nice and whatever is the prettiest or the most floweriest words. And you'll use these words that may or may not be true. You just sometimes y'all just be making shit up online. Because it, quote unquote, make the narrative look better. And a lot of this also, in my opinion, stems back into the, the war, the sexes and all that shit. I'm, I, I'm team woman, so I have to make this woman always look good. I'm team man, so I have to make this man always look good. And, and, and shit like that very frustrates me because you not, really can't have conversations. You're not seeing this conversation with like Cher is dating some 20-something-year-old rapper, nigga. Nope. And, post, and just posted like engagement photos on social media calling him daddy and shit. You're not seeing the vitriol. That's a much bigger age gap. And and I think you're right. It does boil down to like, well, I'm team woman, so this is okay. Um, and which is like the most and shallow version any decision of, that this person makes. It's the most shallow version of support that yes, I've ever it is. seen. Because it's, it's not, not real support. It's not real, and it doesn't hold up under any level of scrutiny. It just seems like a childish, like this is my team type of rooting for folks. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just thought that was so interesting to see, like even this Lakeith Stanfield thing, 
where we would just typically be like, maybe it's messy. I agree with that. But then be like, is he must he's grooming her? She's 23. She you know what I mean? Even when you see like a, a someone brought up Jeff Goldblum, his wife's 36 and he was 66 when they started dating or whatever. Man, that's a 36 year old. If she make a grown ass decision that I want to fuck Jeff Goldblum, like the rest of you motherfuckers that are all about that age want to fuck Jeff Goldblum, I see the tweets. If she make that decision, that's she a grown woman. She the one got to deal with changing them diapers when he's 90. I don't. So that's that's they deal. I, I don't know. It just feels like there is some there's something there i haven't fully thought it out but it's something there where it's not fully about protecting women or whatever it's about infantilizing them so you can hate the dudes rather than to be like yeah it's just a grown person that made a decision i wouldn't have made and you know right. it'll work out however it works out for them but i wouldn't have did that shit you know Co correct and and for some people just say that but they don't want to say that so it turns into like a projection thing you know because it is is wild and i completely understand how people feel but you know it's wild how people would tell you that a 23 year old is grown and a 23 year old can make adult decisions and you can't tell a 23 year old what the fuck to do and then a 23 year old does you know things that 23 year olds do then all of a sudden the perspective changes well i can see it if there's other extenuating circumstances like agree oh hold on please like a workplace play thing or someone grooming somebody that at that where they're 17 or some shit, you know, like something like that. I get, but if a 40 year old woman decides she want to fuck Jeff Goldblum, that's like I've seen so many people that are my age talk about how they want to fuck Jeff Goldblum. It's not even weird to me. I'm like, okay, cool. It's like if a nigga wanted to date uh Pam if Pam Grid tried to holler at a nigga today, and they was like, I'm like, I get it, bro. You know, like, like, okay, wifey is 76. Who cares, bro? Y'all are grown and y'all should be able to live y'all lives happily or whatever. It just feels uh, like people want to throw in some some other type of moral judgment that really ain't got shit to do with them. Mm -hmm. You know, I think grown, grown is grown. If you grown, then you grown and that's all I got for you. Um, so a lot of this stuff feels weird. If, if this woman wants to be with Diddy, and he having side babies and they got some type of understanding good for them i don't give a fuck unless somebody come out and say something different i'm not gonna assume anything because i actually don't know these niggas in that way and she everything she's been saying make it sound like she cool with this shit so it wouldn't be my thing but that's y'all's thing uh, good luck to everybody so good luck to you all uh, raw meat influencer, the liver king, is facing a $25 million class action lawsuit at their Ain't that the dude who before that was eating liver, had his kids, and, and, and wife out there liver? Yes, but apparently what he didn't show is he was eating steroids. <gasps> he also got plastic surgery to make it look like he got abs. He had abs inserted under his skin. Oh, oh, but he he promoting it like all I do is eat liver, and the people like nigga, no, like you can't look like that and just eat liver. Like, quit lying to these people. Yeah, he preaches and promotes primal living, which is him just eating raw liver, and his family eat raw liver, and he's the liver king. And it turns out he achieved his physique by using steroids and getting uh, all kinds of supplements that he was selling to people. That it, it sound like. Uh, he's got a $25 million class action lawsuit now saying he misled those customers about those supplements because he said he was on the supplements and eating raw and that's how he got jacked and it turns out he was supplementing them with some steroids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, the lawsuit also says uh, they allege raw meat diet is dangerous and life-threatening. I just find that part funny because <laughs> who didn't know that? <laughs> <laughs> like that seemed like you shouldn't be able to sue for that last part. Like, also, did you know eating raw liver you can get sick? Like, yeah, yes, that, yes. Yes. yes, yes, everyone knew that. Real yeah. sick. But yeah, get him out of here. You know. Um, so I, I just and it's also one of those stories where like it's hard to feel any sympathy for his victims because they definitely are on some toxic manosphere, QAnon adjacent cult shit and so 
them getting taken in by this obvious grifter, my sympathy levels are pretty low. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, okay, well, yeah, that's and, too bad. And it would not be surprising. I might be wrong, but this, he sounded like he was already popular, but it would not be, be surprising if a lot of his popularity went up during the pandemic because, like you say, a lot of people spend a lot of time online going down a lot of fucking holes. And because he's so popular, he started probably crossing a lot of their paths. So for a lot of people, like you say, they they replaced the energy that they were putting in their jobs or they wives, their husband and kids. And they started focusing on him because, you know, in their minds, a lot of by the white men, he was selling them a dream that actually wasn't a true dream. So, yeah, I, I can see this lawsuit. This lawsuit makes a hundred percent sense because you're not taking these steroids you actually really don't look like that you didn't actually work out and all this shit you're telling me that uh eating this raw shit which ain't 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 good ain't healthy for you raw you know supposed to have you look like me but you know and you up yeah, here I, I get all that i just think um I, I mean can you sue for flat tummy tea can you sue for the body trainers i just wonder because you know these ads that are supplements on instagram and shit. i just i just wonder where it stops karen is all like i get that's, the lawsuit it's not hard true. to understand why he will be sued but i think it's a lot of phony motherfuckers out here you know i think every time fucking chloe kardashian post a workout video you should be able to sue because <laughs> it's like nigga, we know you go under the night why are you even pretending that this is a you know this is just about like getting in the gym twice a day right we know it ain't like this He's like, eat this raw meat like my kids. Arr, go ahead and do this uh Ken apps. I'm like, nigga. Yeah. Um, Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde break up after two years of dating. Okay. I guess the movie's finally out. Uh <laughs> <laughs> the contract is up. Harry Styles, ain't he the one that played in that controversial movie? Everybody kept talking. My darling, the oh, the darling movie. Olivia Wilde directed. Don't worry, darling. Okay. And, and she starred in it, and so did he. Okay. And so now they're taking a break after about two years of dating. Uh, he's still touring him. and now going abroad. She's focused on her kids and her work in L.A. It's a very amicable decision, according to people. Okay, I guess. Yeah. Good for them. Everything she touched, man, it just, hmm, she just seemed a little... I don't know. She got either some bad luck or some uh, shady ways because, you know, that that shit she did with um, that shit she did with Don't Worry Darling promotion and Shy was foul. Yeah, I it, honestly I, it just never sat right with me, you know. Right, because Shella Buff literally was like, I, I got real shit that y'all want to come at me, but this right here, no. <laughs> like, I'm not and going I'm down sure. with this one. And I'm sure she was grooming Harry Styles because he was 28 and she's 38. So we know how that works, according to Twitter logic. Uh, this is an abusive situation. And she was his boss on this film. So, like, uh, she need to go to jail in Oregon and get life life in jail forever, right? Um, no. A mood done it. Campbell River RCMP seek a mischievous door ringer, doorbell ringer. Um, and I'll put the picture up of this culprit. Uh, but this person has been going around and ringing people's doorbells and then running away around 10 o'clock at night. <gasps> Chick fil A cow, the hell is this? <laughs> Ooh. Eat more chicken. Ooh. And that is a white hand. So if we're playing guess the race, I'm gonna go with white. <laughs> I am too. Mounties in Campbell River, BC are on the lookout for someone who was dressed as a cow ringing doorbells and then running away. Oh, Canadian crime. Oh, so. Oh, what is happening in Canada? It must be so nice. <laughs> it got to be real nice. The worst you got to worry about is your ring going ding ding. What is who is, right. who is this? Eh? A grown man playing ding dong ditch in a Chick fil A cow costume. Nice. Got the streets, got the streets on the, got the APB, got the, got them on the lookout. <laughs> got the Mounties out here on horses looking for them. Over here, we like, listen, a man tried to machete three cops to death in Times Square on New Year's right. Eve. Over there, they like, oh, the first day on the job. This one, this one hoser keeps, keeps ringing the doorbell and running off, eh? Like, damn. The same time, 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Be careful while you're out, eh? Yeah. 
<laughs> like they just want to stop him and give him some maple syrup and be like, "Come on, calm down, buddy." You know. Right? Uh, many you people serious. Many people may consider the game of Nikki Nine Doors a harmless prank, and we yeah, are yeah. sure there are adults. Okay. That, yeah, there, we are sure there are adults in the community who remember playing the game and good fun as you said, Constable Mari Tyre. Um, uh, unfortunately, in the Penfield area, what we have are some young people that have taken the game too far. They said several yard items have been broken as people try to run away from the doors. Uh, and some of the doorbell ringer, ringing has occurred as late as 3 a.m. Oh, oh, see, so waking up the whole family. Yeah, so now they're hoping that people can talk to their kids about what's important. Yeah, I wonder if it's like a some TikTok trend stuff. I don't know. It, it gotta be. I hear playing ding dong ditch. Yeah. Uh, the, the whites. You love to see them, you know. Um, all right, let's get into uh some uh guess the race. What time is it? It's time to guess the race. 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 I'll guess the race time. The game we go around the globe, find different articles, and Karen guesses the race of the people involved as well as the chat room. Um, uh, let's get into it. A uh, man was accused of impersonating a U.S. Air Force special agent at Madeira Beach Smoke Shop. At a Madeira Beach Smoke Shop. According to Pinellas County Sheriff's Office report, Stephen Scott, 37, entered higher up smoke shop December 10th with a gold badge hanging from his neck and asked the shop employees to help with the Delta 8 product. What the hell is that? Delta 8 is a legal form of THC, the main psychoactive compound found in marijuana. It's commonly sold at smoke shops, CBD stores, and other establishments that are not permitted to sell mar medical marijuana in Florida. Deputy okay. says Scott showed shop workers a business card that said Stephen Scott, United States Air Force Office of Special Investigations. He allegedly hand wrote special agents on the card. He was too lazy to, to, to get the 500 Vista print cards for $9.99. Yes. He wrote. <laughs> what? Handwritten. This. this Sir. <laughs> That's so good. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That is so fucking stupid. You start reading it, you'll be like, um, why is this handwritten? <laughs> Cheap. Who would believe that? Right. We ran, we ran out of ink. Flip it over on the back. See <laughs> it said you must why do this is a hand do? drawn. <laughs> <laughs> the Why does it just say police? The hell is this? <laughs> the fact that he was wearing the badge uh, hanging from a chain. <laughs> what did he was to watch like Top Gun? <laughs> and, like, he must have really thought he was Miami Vice. <laughs> 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 Miami oh, CSI. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we threw the gang in. <laughs> the hell I, is this? I just picture him coming in with like shades. And a shoot suit jacket over a t-shirt with the <laughs> with the with the special agent chain. Oh man. So then the, uh he told employees he's a special agent. Store manager felt compelled to search inventory records because of Scott's words and actions, according to the arrest report. The sheriff's office reached out to the official to the office of special investigation to learn Scott was previously employed there, but never held the title special agent. His employment of uh ended in 2016. He was arrested December 30th, charged with falsely impersonating the officer of the law. He remains in custody on five thousand dollars bail. Karen guessed the race of Stephen Scott. White. White. All right. Has a picture of Tom Cruise on the cards. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Good. Yeah, yes. good. He went by his code name, Maverick. Oh, yeah, has a picture of Tom Cruise on the car's white nonsense. Special agent double O dumbass. <laughs> Dunder <laughs> Mifflin White. I got a promotion. I'm just waiting on my new cars white. Previously employed there, white. Whitey white white. Don't pick up the phone. Wanna be white and McLovin white. 
white light than white the correct answer is and everybody said the same thing because everybody got it right white <laughs> oh no yeah i don't know why that story was, that was headline. oh yeah I, I don't know like he he probably had on hats and shades or something i just I don't know why that story was so good to me. Oh my God. Oh, the balls on this man. Y'all yeah, gonna need to see the Delta Eight. <laughs> I'm here with US Special Forces. Uh, here's my card if you need to see my card. Why is that a special agent written in, in pencil? Mm, don't worry, that's how we sir, do it. Sir, what, ha what happened to your hairline in the word special agents? Y'all both that's, took they take, they take your hairline once you get above G7 clearance. Okay, you know, a lot of people don't know that. And I'm telling you a little inside information right now. So let's just, I, if you could just pull the weed out, that'll be, I could be on my way. Okay. <laughs> I know you got the Delta 7. Okay. I know you got it up in here. All right. I went to G13 and, uh, <laughs> oh man. Um, a woman is accused of dropping off 50 pounds of human waste at the police station's front door. I guess she was like, y'all is full of shit. Uh, yeah. When asked by officers to come and collect the buckets of excrement, the lady in question reportedly declared it wasn't her problem. <clears throat> according, what the to, she, according to TMZ, the suspect is 46-year-old Mindy Stevens, the wife of an assistant fire chief. Stevens is alleging is alleged to have pulled up outside the Electra Police Department last month and dumped what is quite literally the mother of all loads. Officers said are said that found three five gallon buckets of poo outside the station. Um, and who who saw Stevens who was wearing a hazmat suit strolling towards an SUV that had well, a. Then you know tank. you know you ain't had no you know this shit was a problem. When asked what she was doing. She told the officer dropping off buckets of human shit before driving away. <laughs> oh my God. Stevens was identified as a suspect after the officer reviewed security footage and recognized her voice. Police then contacted city officials about her deposit her deposits. And they were told she would be called about picking up the buckets. However, she allegedly told city officials it wasn't her problem, leading her to be charged with illegal dumping. Uh, she is also charged with violating the Texas Health and Safety Code, but released after a night in jail and forking over $2,000 in bail money. She, TMZ also reports that this isn't her first rodeo. Back in 2020, she was charged with aggravated assault after she allegedly punctured a man's arm with a set of keys. By the way, Goddamn. yeah. Um, yeah, so that was, yeah, that's it. Uh, Karen gets the race. White. Karen's going with white. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. She's tired of that shit and isn't taking it anymore. White nonsense part two. This is why they stopped naming babies Karen White. <laughs> LOL, this Karen here, White. This is a nasty white woman. M Mindy, former first name, Karen White. She had bail money, jailbird white, give a shit white, audacity, a cockdacity white. How long did it take her to collect that much shit white? These are all great questions and all correct <laughs> answers. <laughs> Is it your is it your shit? They did that. Yeah, yeah. She definitely like she did it. She looked guilty as shit. Uh, no pun intended. But um, is it your shit though? What do you collect that that's much? Collected. That's a collection of shit. You, you how you long that shit? How long does it take you to collect that much shit? That's a great question. You know what I mean? I have so many. I have more questions than answers at this point. But we don't have time for that. It's time to go. Uh, to the bonus round against the race where Karen is uh, two for two so far. Yeah. Um, yeah. What time is it? It's not the bitch was white. I ain't racist. How can I be racist about anybody or anything in my life? How can I? Call them niggas. Just call them niggas. It's all right karen 
You're two for two. How you feeling? Mm-hmm. Right now? Yay. Okay, you feeling good. Okay. Feeling mm-hmm. confident going into this last round? Uh, I, I guess we're gonna see. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, now you're starting to lose it a little bit. You were right? I was good until confident. you stop asking the questions. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, here's the last one. Uh good luck to you. May the odds ever be in your favor. A California man dressed as fireball whiskey, bottled, collared, as a fireball whiskey bottle, blah, 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 blah. Let's try this again, guys. Three, two, one. A California man dressed as fireball whiskey, collared for drunken conduct. Oh, like the fireball yeah. whiskey bottle? A Halloween reveler dressed as a bottle of fireball cinnamon whiskey. Yes. Was a- I like that whiskey. <laughs> So okay, okay. We, know how to get, we know how to get Karen on your on your side if you do a crime. Dress as her favorite one of her favorite brands of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> she'll be so distracted by the 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 attire that she can't hold <laughs> the to the crimes. Um <clears throat> so yeah, he was arrested for drunken disorderly conduct. What you don't say he just what? like a whole ass bottle of whiskey. He was probably just tipping his head over and pouring the shit straight into his cup. <laughs> he was also arrested for domestic battery and several other charges. Oh, no. Now, you took it too far. Mm-mm, too far. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I draw. I can deal with drinking this. <laughs> right. You start crossing over the other shit. That's why. I, now, now I'm paying attention. Yeah, this ain't no fireball whiskey uh, behavior. This is some mad dog 2020 behavior. That sure is. This some slick small lick of bull <laughs> <laughs> so, this is that dog look up behavior. Don't be doing, don't be doing this. Right. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Uh Dominic Salazar, 31, was booked into the county lockup at 3:20 a.m. on an assortment of felony misdemeanor vehicular counts. He lives in Madera, City Central, uh, in Central California. Um, he's being held in lieu of $55,000 bond, as seen above. Uh, the six foot, 293 pounds Salazar was wearing his Halloween costume when photographed by jail personnel. The whiskey outfit, which retails for about $45 is 100% polyester and intended for adults of legal drinking age. Um, the description of the costume, Halloween is all about letting your wildest dreams come true. So this year become a human sized bottle of fireball. You're welcome. All right, Karen, that's the race of Mr. Dominic Salazar. Dominic Salazar? That's his name. Latino. Latino. Right. Let's check the chat room. He dresses in Crown Royal White. Oh, we dress in Crown Royal White. He we he needed to stick the tequila Latino, Latino, white, presenting Mexican, Hispanic, cinnamon skin Mexican. That's listen. I've never heard another race described as a food, and I'm into this now. Okay. Matter of fact, if we normalize that for everybody, then we can I'll forgive chocolate. Um mm-hmm. Latino and oh, I'm not gonna say that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, though. That's a good one. I'm not gonna say that, that one. one might flag, that one might flag YouTube. <laughs> Let's just say they called him some type of wino and um a, a, a slur that goes before that that has a W in it. Anyway, the correct answer is and uh, a lot of people got it right. One person got it wrong. It is Latinx. You got it right. <laughs> or, or Latino. I don't want no problems. Like, there's one person that passive aggressively direct messages me for saying Latinx, which I'm never trying to offend people. You know why the fuck I'm saying Latinx is because I'm scared. Mm-hmm. But oh, yeah. Latino, I don't want to erase nobody's culture and shit. But yeah, so he's Latino. Please don't DM me again. Um, and uh, one person did say black and got it wrong. <laughs> also, they said white, but you know, they still getting booed. Um, all right, that's it for Guess the Race. Can, good job, Karen. Um, <clears throat> let's go to uh, Sword Ratchetness. Hey, 
a sword wielding robbery suspect faces felony charges. <clears throat> a Flathead County man arrested after allegedly cutting through school property armed with a knife in April is back behind bars. This time accused oh, of threatening back a man. Behind bars. Mm -hmm. This time accused of threatening a man with a sword. Uh, he did this during the December 10th robbery. So he escalated from knife to sword. Knives are a gateway oh, drug. No. He didn't go down. He went up. <clears throat> Alice James Haddle, 19, of Kalispell, faces felony robbery charges and criminal possession of dangerous drug charges in Flathead County District Court following his arrest. Uh, yeah, and Flathead, that, that's a simple town. It's not like Phillips Head. Okay, it's a little mm -hmm. more complicated. Uh, held in uh, county jail with a bail set at $100,000. He is expected to appear before Judge Amy Eddy on uh, January 19th. These names. Amy Eddy? I don't think that name is that crazy. It, it related to Mr. Ed? <laughs> sure, Karen. Kalis James Haddle. What race do you think he is for bonus points, Karen? Say that name again. Kalis James Haddle. White. Karen's going with white. And let's check the picture. The correct answer is, you got it right, Karen. It is a white man. Oh. Good job. Yeah, that hair. That that that's some straight up bed head. He looked like he cut his hair with a sword. <laughs> Don't it? Yes, he did. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the victim told the officers a man match a head of description walked into the West Idaho street business that morning and tried to buy gloves and epoxy lacking the money for the purchases. The man asked the victim if he could help when the victim turned him down, the man tried to leave the store and that's when the victim confronted him and had allegedly threatened everyone in the store. I'm about to chop everyone up. If I don't get these items, he said, allegedly. Uh, he pulled what looked like a sword from a sheath on his hip. What's epoxy? That's drugs. Epoxy? Um, I think it's some shit that has to do with um, like uh, like I think like getting. Matter of fact, let me look it up. Let me. Yeah, is epoxy just glue? What is epoxy glue? The, the epoxy is a two-part adhesive that forms when you mix. So uh, maybe he was trying to get high off of it. Oh, half of the groove. <clears throat> yeah, like can let me see. Can you get high off epoxy? Oh, damn, that shit popped right up, didn't it? Um, <laughs> it somebody else been trying to figure this out. Yeah, what happens if you smoke epoxy? It can affect the oh, nose. No. Is it safe to inhale? Uh, <laughs> it can irritate the respiratory tract. So yeah, you might have been huffing glue or something. Okay. So the police showed up shortly after they learned about the alleged robbery. According to court documents, the victim told officers the man matching Haddle's description walked into the, 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 the oh wait, I said that. Um, officers who recognized both the description of Haddle and that of the sword. So he's quite oh, shit. familiar. Oh shit. The sword has a name, Simu Mari. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they was like, uh, yeah, that's the, that's fact, you and your sword. the fact that the police knew him and the sword does not yes. bode well for his innocence. Y'all a combo. It you don't like, see one without the other. Let me guess. <laughs> he had was the sword curved to the left. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's him. Um, so yeah, they um found him soon after he admitted to wielding the sword and knowing it was likely to scare the victim. Uh, they recovered the stolen gloves and epoxy during the search. They also covered a bag full of suspected methamphetamine. Okay, the decisions mm -hmm. make. This is, I mean, decisions were bad anyway, but now the decisions make more sense. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what I always say. Wherever there's meth, there's mess. Uh, yes, it is. Or, or as Shannon Sharp would say, wherever there's meth, there's meth. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. That was, that was beneath that's me. Hilarious. Investigators have since shipped the contents of the baggie uh, on the state crime lab for to the state crime lab for analysis. Uh, Haddle caused a stir earlier this year after earning a misdemeanor disorderly conduct charge for wandering across Evergreen Junior High campus with a knife. Um, oh no! He was waving a butterfly knife around while children were present on the playground. Oh no! <laughs> Poor kids! 
Yeah. So if convicted of robbery, he faces between two and 40 years in state prison with an additional two to 10 years for wielding the sword. Oh, my God. That's a huge difference between two and 40. Damn. Man, like we could pick anything between these numbers. Well, good luck to everybody involved with that. All right, y'all. We will talk to y'all um, later on in the week. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, we'll be back. And until next time, I love you. I love you, too. Mwah. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Bye, baby. Bye-bye. I love you. I love you. Watch the Hornets.